Hi, in today's episode I'd like to talk about limit switch sensors and I will try my best to keep it to the point because this topic is really complex. Let's get going. Okay, so a quick definition. The limit switch is in the end of the axis and it prevents a crash on your machine by shutting everything off once it is detected that the machine hits that area. The homing switch, however, has a different purpose. It really sets the zero point of that axis and lets the machine know where it stands in relation to its entire travel off that particular axis. So, so much to the definition. Okay, on commercial machines, you will see usually a relatively large, clunky mechanical switch, even with an arm and a roller, yet the machine is very accurate in its homing. Well, the way that it's achieved is that it will make that switch, but then it's looking for what is called a zero pulse off the encoder of the servo motor. So the switch itself does not provide any accuracy at all. It just says, hey, yeah, you are, you are in your home position. Now drive the other way and look for a zero pulse. That is how a commercial machine usually gets its home position. They also often have glass scales. Um, all of that in conjunction with the software will determine the home point. Now, on our machines, ours meaning DIY machines, that is completely different. We rely on a prox switch, for example, like this, to really home the machine. And why would that be important to have that accurate? Well, on my machine, I have an axis that is driven with dual motors. And because of that, I need both of those motors and both of those positions to be accurate, repeatedly accurate, so that the gantry will be set square. If one would be a 30 second of an inch forward and the other one is 30 second of an inch back, then you can easily see that the gantry that you see behind me would be setting like this and nothing would be square anymore. So that is why I'm making this video. I like to test different types of switches. In total, I tested five different types of switches and I like to start here with a micro switch. They are called also snap action switch. And what's nice about these, they're cheap. You can get them for three to five dollars and it's worth buying a quality one. This one is made by Omron. They're surprisingly accurate. And if you happen to see the one with a roller, don't get that, don't get that one. The one with just with a lever is more accurate. Um, the roller also will wear over time. What I like also is it's only two wires. So it's easy to wire for you. And they come with a normally closed and a normally open contact. So you can choose which way you want to wire these. Next up, I have a regular prox switch here that is also um, called an inductive switch. So this one here is the Kians EZ-12M and a little bit larger. This here is an NPN switch. That's what I need for my board. And it actually comes with a four wire hookup. And this four wire hookup allows me to choose it between it's normally closed or normally open. Now the cost of this one is around 80 something dollars. Um, maybe on eBay you find them between 60 and 100 dollars, I would think. The next guy is right here. This is a hall sensor or um, basically a magnetic switch. So it needs a counterpart where it will sense the, mag the magnet actually arriving and then it switches. Now, the nice thing about these, they are also relatively cost effective. This one and the other one also, they have an LED on the back. Uh, this is a three wire hookup as well. So you need to order that in a normally closed as a normally closed switch. And then also in the correct version in piano PNP. Now, next <coughs> is an optical switch. So this is also called to as an optical slot sensor because there's a small slot in the center of it and you will basically um, put a barrier in between and then the optics know that this switch is made. Now, 
again this one comes this is a Panasonic here Panasonic and it comes as four wires so NPN or PNP you have to order but normally closed or open you can select by choosing the output wire they are around 22 to 25 dollars if you choose a Panasonic one but there are other name brands and there are also some no names I like these um, because they are accurate and inexpensive the next one is a little piece of awesomeness this right here probably very hard to see at this moment is a one micron limit switch or in our case home switch it's a mechanical switch so also two wires and the repeatability is better than one micrometer this one here is made by Metrol. It's a company out of Japan. This type of switch actually, if I understand that right, was made in conjunction with Toyota for Toyota's uh, assembly lines. This one here is really small and I can see this as a probing switch for 3D printers. Um, that would be like awesome, I think, to use. Um, so. Let's see how they perform and I'll show you the test setup next. I mounted every single switch onto an axis on my machine. I first wanted to build a fixture for this and then I realized that it just has all of the same components and the axis would have already. So I homed the axis out and important to note is that I didn't use an external measurement. I just drove the axis onto home, zeroed it and then measured the variation to the next home. So the 30 measurements that I took subsequently would all be in relation to the first home. And then you see the deviation right here, two thousands, minus two thousands again, plus three thousands. So that is a total right now of five thousands, for example. And so I plotted actually all of those in a standard deviation chart to get an understanding of the span and how the standard deviation would look like but I think that's too much detail and um, isn't really necessary for this video. So the results are in. The least accurate in my test was the Hall sensor. It was also a relatively cheap version of a Hall sensor I have to admit that and I used a different magnet. So I expected a little bit better. So the result is 600 of a millimeter 0.06 millimeter deviation. Next is the Kian's Prox switch, much, much better with one and a half millimeter deviation, 0.015. And next is the Omron micro switch. I couldn't believe it. That little snap action $5 switch has a deviation of 1.300, so 0.013 millimeters. Next is the Panasonic optical slot switch and it had a uh, variation of 0.01 millimeter, so one hundredths of a millimeter. However, I like to note on that one that it has a tightest bell curve. So it has the tightest distribution around zero if you plot the standard deviation for that, for that sample size, which by the way, I took 30, the group is 30 uh, measurements that I took. And number one, the metrol high precision micro switch. I could not measure a deviation actually. It is rated at one micrometer, 0.001 millimeter. And I couldn't, my machine is not able to measure a deviation. So I think it's even better than that. Now, I would like to state that the wear on that switch is also probably really, really small because it has a carbide or even a ceramic um, plunger that you can get with it. Uh, there are different styles of that switch and it is rated for 3 million, some of them are rated for 3 million, others for 10 million cycles. So what is my choice? What I am going to use on my machine? I'm gonna go with the Panasonic optical switch. The reason is that most of the measurements were within 3 thousandths of a millimeter and the one I like from Metrol, this high precision mechanical switch, would be 5,000 millimeter rated because I would like to have the one that can also have a side action like so. And then there is no difference. 
So the optical switch I also like because it runs directly off 5 volts, like my board needs. And it is not obstructed by any schmutz or something that would be on accumulating when you machine. There's also, by the way, a drawback for the hall sensor if you machine metal, being ferrous metal, that it could accumulate on the magnet itself. Okay, so that is it for this video. I hope you got something out of this. I certainly did. I did not expect that little micro snap action switch from Omron for five bucks to do this good. Okay, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye.